الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي جعل يوم الجمعة السيد الأيام ولا نعبد ولا نستعين إلا إياه وهو الذي فرض صلاة الجمعة بقوله تعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا إذا نودي للصلاة من يوم الجمعة فاسعوا إلى ذكر الله وذروا البيع والصلاة على محمد سيد الأنام خاتم النبيين سيد المرسلين وعلى آله الطاهرين وأصحابه الغر الميامين ما اتصلت عين بنظر ووعت أذن بخبر وسلم الله عليهم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا أما بعد فيقول الله تبارك وتعالى بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إذا جاء نصر الله والفتح ورأيت الناس يدخلون في دين الله أفواجا فسبح بحمد ربك واستغفره إنه كان توابا وقال تعالى في مقام آخر إنك ميت وإنهم ميتون وقال تعالى في مقام آخر وعبد ربك حتى يأتيك اليقين عباد الله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما وقد قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فيما ورد عما كان بين صحابته رضي الله عنه أجمعين وهذا عند وفاته صلى الله عليه وسلم حيث خطبهم وقال إن عبدا قد خيره الله بين أن يؤتيه من زهرة الدنيا ما شاء وبين ما عنده فاختار ما عنده فلم يبكي من بينهم إلا أبو بكر رضي الله عنه لما عرف Dear brothers and sisters, we start by praising Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. We praise Him for His every blessing that known to us and those unknown to us. We ask Him by His beautiful names and divine names that He grant us His blessings, His forgiveness and acceptance on this blessed day of Jum'ah. We ask Him that He forgive us in the Muslim Ummah in entirety. We ask Him that He send His blessings and salutations upon our beloved Prophet and Messenger. Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam and upon his pure household and his sahaba and his ummah. Dear brothers and sisters, we come now towards the end of the month of Safar. Towards the end of the month of Safar, in the end, towards the end of the month of Safar, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam organized one of the last expeditions in the 11th year of the Hijrah before he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed away. In that expedition, he decided that Usama ibn Zayd, the son Usama, the son of Zayd, who was the adopted slave and freed slave of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, that at the age of 17, that he be an army leader that would head towards the Romans in Syria. And it was shortly after that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam fell ill. But before this, you have the Hajj of the Messenger of Allah Wasallam, And in that Hajj he said to the Sahaba Learn from me how to perform the Hajj Because Because perhaps maybe I will not meet you after this year It comes in the Hadith of the Shu'ab al-Iman of Imam Bayhaqi rahimahullah that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that when any of you were to if any of you were to think of a trial in your life if any of you were to think of a trial in your life and you need patience think of your test that was sent to you with my demise my departure from this world because there is no greater musibah that fell upon mankind than the departure of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I chose to speak about this today, why? Although the death of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was not in Safar, it was in Rabiul Awwal. But out of respect that generally in this month we speak about the birth of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the light that he brought to mankind. But it's, a, it's an important subject to talk about. And it's an Recorded in the books of hadith, generally you'll find a chapter Babu Wafat and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. 
the chapter of the ahadith related regarding the passing of the Messenger of Allah Wasallam. And there are many lessons in it for all of us. And so towards the end of the, the month of Safar, when the Messenger of Allah Wasallam organized this expedition, and Usama bin Zayd was sent out, and they were sent out towards Palestine. This was the first sign that the message of the Messenger of Allah is not just restricted to the Arabian Peninsula, Mecca or Medina. Rather, it will expand. This is the first sign. The Messenger of Allah visited the graveyards much these days. And visiting the graveyards uh, to remind himself of his departure. And the reality is the Messenger of Allah knew. Why? Because he told some of the Sahaba after that this year Jibreel السلام, decided in Ramadan not only to teach me the Quran once but to teach me the Quran twice. And so there were signs which the Messenger of Allah understood. He went to the graveyard of the, 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 the Shuhada of Uhud. And when he went there, he said, May Allah Ta'ala have mercy on you. May Allah Ta'ala forgive you. And shortly, I will meet you at the Hawl. I will meet you at the pool of water at the Mahshar. And I will be there before you are there. I will be there before you are there. And when he was sending Mu'adh to Yemen, also shortly before his departure, when he was sending him, he guided him, gave him guidance. And then he said to him, O oh Mu'adh, the next time you come, you'll see the masjid or my grave. And Mu'adh started to cry. And some days after, towards the beginning of the month of Rabiul Awwal, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu fell ill. This was after he led a janazah and he started to become ill, he started to get a fever. And at the time, fevers were the cause of many deaths. The Messenger of Allah said that the fever is a illness from Jahannam, comes in hadith. Now this doesn't mean that still an illness can be the means of your uh, forgiveness of your sins. However, the illness can be very intense sometimes. And the fever was a very intense illness. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu he came home and it was the day of one of the wives. As we know, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu was just and he distributed his days with his wives and his times with them. And so it was one of the days with one of his wives, the Ummahat al-Mu'mineen, and he fell ill. And then when he moved to the house of Aisha radiallahu anha, he requested that he could remain there. And they also understood that he's ill. When, he, when he's cured, they assumed when he's cured, then we can ask him to move again. But for the time being, let him stay in the house of Aisha radiallahu anha because he's ill. And so he became, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he became ill so much so that his fever, the Sahaba Radhi said, he had the fever of 10 men. And he had a headache, extreme headache. He came home and he tied his head with the imama, with the turban. Because of the pulsing pain that he felt, he tied his head. And it became so difficult that the family of the Messenger of Allah وسلم, specifically Abbas and Ali radiallahu anhuma, the uncle and the cousin of the Messenger of Allah وسلم, they began serving him day and night. And it became difficult for the Messenger of Allah وسلم, to walk. And so they would carry him on their shoulders to the masjid for salah. And this is something, one of the most biggest and important lessons to gain from thee. Demise of the Messenger of Allah What was the importance he gave to Salah? How did he treat the Salah? How did he teach the Sahaba to treat their Salah? 
And so they would carry him to the, the Masjid al-Nabawi. And so one day after the Salat of Dhuhr, he gave a speech, more some wa'ad, some advice to the Sahaba radiallahu in which he gave another, a few signals that soon he'd be leaving them. He said to them, the first thing is that Allah cursed the Jews and the Christians because they took the graves of their prophets as places of worship. Meaning, when I pass away, do not take my grave as a place of worship, that you would make sajda to it. Sajda is only made to Allah Ta'ala. Salah is only performed to Allah Ta'ala. And then after that, he said to them, that if I've wronged any person, now we can see the Messenger of Allah is ill, He's the leader of his people who can be more just than him. He's asking, we're, we're always willing to ask, what do other people owe me? What do other people owe me? But how willing am I to, in the open public to say, what do I owe to you? Because if you owe me something, I forgive you. But if I owe someone something, I should fear Allah that Allah Ta'ala will take me on the day of resurrection accountable for that. The Messenger of Allah no one can be more just than him. He's worried, do I owe anyone anything? He repeatedly said this over and over and over again. Until one of the Sahaba, he thought that you know, maybe the message of Allah is asking us, and if I don't say something, I'll be sinful. This Sahabi, he, he, the message of Allah once the, a beggar came, and he was asking for some silver coins. The message of Allah did not have it with him at the time. So he said, someone give it to him on my behalf. So the Sahaba, he, he remembered this. He said, O oh, Rasulullah you owe me three silver coins. This is like a few dollars. You owe me three silver coins. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu said how and when. He reminded him. He said, okay, give it to him. Mind you that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has what in his house at this time? He says, Aisha radiallahu anha, how much wealth do we have? She says, we have seven silver coins. There are seven silver coins in the household of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is a few dollars, twenty dollars, twenty-five dollars. The scholars actually try to, uh, you know, quantify it, calculate it. Besides this, there's a little bit of oil left to burn the lamps in his household, and we know even that finished. Even that finished. There was no oil to light lamps in the house of the Rasul, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. There was some barley. The Messenger of Allah said, O oh, Aisha radiallahu anha, give this wealth to whom deserves it and give the rest to the poor. What am I going to do? Leaving this world with wealth in my hand and Allah Ta'ala asked me, why do you have wealth in your hands? What am I going to do with this wealth? Allah Ta'ala give this wealth so that it be distributed amongst mankind. What am I going to do with it? If there's one blessing that the, the people of poverty have in, in the hereafter, there are many blessings of the people of the poor. In Islam, we believe this. We don't believe that the people of poverty are a, a burden of, above us in this dunya. No. There's many blessings that they bring actually. One of the greatest blessings for them in the hereafter, their accountability for their wealth is what? Nothing. They won't be held accountable. The Messenger of Allah gave his wealth away. The seven whatever, you know, coins, silver coins that's left. After this, the Messenger of Allah continues, his illness starts to intensify. And he's no longer able to go to the masjid. And a day comes where the Messenger of Allah asks the Sahaba, he faints, please pour water over me from a certain, well, a certain well so that I can wake up. One time, two times, three times, seven times pass until he realizes he can't go to the masjid for salah. Bilal is calling him. Right. Come for Aisha Salah. 
come for the Aisha salah. Before the Iqamah would ever take place, he'd go to the the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He would ask him, "O oh, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, it's almost time. Can you come?" And so the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam sees that now I can't, I can't lead the salah. He's unable to. Even his words at this point, he could speak very less. And so he appoints Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. And when he appoints Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, he says to Aisha radiallahu anha, tell the people that Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu should lead the salah. Aisha radiallahu anha says, no, maybe you should appoint someone else. One would think it's an honor. Someone points me for the salah, I run to the front. Right? I run to the front. She says, no, try to pick someone else. She even gives an excuse. My father, when he reads the Quran, he cries right, right away. He won't be able to lead the salah. He won't be able to finish it. Try appoint someone else. Appoint the, the father of Hafsa radhlanha, Umar radhlanhu. Hmm? He says, Allah and His Messenger وسلم, are not happy except that Abu Bakr radhlanhu lead the salah. And so from after that time, Abu Bakr radhlanhu for a few days, some time, he led the salah. Until the point came where the Messenger of Allah وسلم, regained his strength of it. And he attempted to come out. And when he came out, he saw the, the salah was taking place. Abu Bakr Radhan noticed that he was coming out. And so he moved back. That now the messenger in the salah, the Messenger of Allah is coming out. I cannot lead the salah. Uh, the Prophet of Allah was pointing to him to stay in his place. He came out, the Messenger of Allah led the remainder of the salah sitting down. Abu Bakr Radhan was standing up. They could only see, the Sahaba could only see Abu Bakr Radhan. This was a sign of what? That the Khulafa al-Rashidun, the Khulafa that would come after the Messenger of Allah وسلم, they guide as it comes in the hadith of Rasulullah وسلم. There will be Khilafah for 30 years. And they will guide on ala minhaj al nubuwa on the method of prophethood. They will be rightly guided. This was the first sign. One of the signs. And so then after this, the Messenger of Allah وسلم, he gave a short talk again to them. And in this he said, that oh my companions, that there was a servant whom Allah Ta'ala gave him the choice between the lavishness and the beauty of this world or to return to Allah. And that servant chose to return to Allah. The Sahaba most of them thought, wow, what a virtuous person this is. They didn't understand who was this referring to until there was one person in the crowd who was sobbing and that was Abu Bakr Radlan. He understood who this was referring to. He understood what this meant. And so the Messenger of Allah وسلم, then gave advice to them. He gave advice to them and one of the last things he said to them in this state was as-salata as-salata ay hafidhu ala salah guard your prayers guard your salah guard your salah the salah is the greatest worship that we have greatest right of Allah Ta'ala over us and then he said wattaqu Allah fi ma malakat imanukum fear Allah Ta'ala in dealing with those people who are beneath you your servants, your slaves, your children, whoever they are. Fear Allah Ta'ala in the way that you're dealing with them. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu he goes back to his household, the, the, the fever intensifies. So much so that the, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu can no longer speak now. The first expedition I mentioned, Usama Radulanu, he was coming back. He came back, he was warned that the Messenger was very ill. The entire Medina Munawwara Sahaba camped in the masjid. Why? Because they were so worried. They were so worried of the state of Rasulullah. They all stayed in the masjid. Usama bin Zayd brought the entire expedition back. And when he came back, the Messenger of Allah saw him and he pointed to the sky and he pointed to him, saying that you will be aided by Allah. 
And his expedition continued. Abu Bakr radiallahu after the demise of Rasulullah said, Who am I to stop an expedition from going out when Allah, Allah's Messenger وسلم, commanded that this expedition go out? And they teach the deen of Allah. They establish the deen of Allah. The, the illness of the Messenger وسلم, intensifies. Aisha radiallahu anha sees this. And so she cradles the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu from behind him. She says that I am the one who was honored that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu passed away while his head was between my chin and my chest. And she saw, he saw the brother of Aisha Radhaan enter the room. He had a miswak, and so his eyes went towards it. Aisha Radhaan understood he wanted the siwak. He took she took it. And she took the other side of it, she chewed it, and then she gave it to the Messenger of Allah Then with vigor and with strength, he cleansed his teeth. That I am ready to meet Jibreel I am ready to meet the angel of death. And I am ready to meet ar rafiq Al-A'la. The higher companion, Allah Ta'ala. The one who, the Messenger of Allah said, the one who loves to meet Allah, Allah loves to meet him. He's preparing to meet Allah Ta'ala. And so the, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in that point of time is seeing many pains of death, the pains of death. And he says, Ya Allah, O oh Allah, protect me from the Sakarat al O oh Allah, protect me from the Sakarat al the pains of death. It was after this that Aisha radiallahu anha said, you know, now when I see someone pass away, I do not ever envy whether they passed away without pain or not. Why? Because I saw the pain of Rasulullah There's no way anyone after him could die without seeing some pain. The Messenger of Allah was sweating. The fever was still there. Right? He's, he's seeing the, the, the pains of death. Fatima radiallahu during this point of time she enters as well. She sees the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam calls her. She, he says something to her and she cries. Then he says something to her and she laughs. And when she cries, he said to her that it is my time that has come to leave this world. And when she laughs, he had said to her that you will be the first to meet me in the next life. And so after some time, the Messenger of Allah continues making dua. And what is he saying? Allahumma fidli warhamni wa alhiqni bin rafiq al-a'la. Oh Allah, have mercy on me. Oh Allah, forgive me. And allow me to join with the higher company. Who is ar rafiq al-a'la? Al-a'la is who? Allah. Oh Allah, join me with you. And so Aisha Radana understood that the time is now come. And so when the Messenger of Allah then he said, he kept continuously saying this, until the last word he says was ar rafiq al-a'la the higher company Allah Ta'ala and he passed away after this happened the, the, the news spread Umar radiallahu panicked in Masjid al-Nabawi he panicked and he screamed and he said only, an hypocrite can, only a hypocrite could say that the messenger of Allah SAW passed away this is, this is not possible and he came into an emotional state Abu Bakr was outside, he came back. First he entered the house of Rasulullah Wasallam, And he saw the beautiful body of Rasulullah Wasallam, And he said, Ya Rasulullah, fidaka abi wa ummi. May my mother and may my father be sacrificed for you. How beautiful you are, how pure you are in life and after death. And then he went out and he said to the Sahaba Radhanum, where he gave his speech to them and he said, Oh, those of you, those of you who are worshipping the Messenger of Allah know that he has passed away. And as of you who are worshipping Allah Ta'ala, فَإِنَّهُ حَيٌّ لَا يَمُوتُ He's ever living and he never dies. And then he recited the verse of the Qur'an in which Allah Ta'ala says that the Messenger of Allah is but a messenger. Muhammad Sallallahu is just but a messenger. And so when he will pass away, will you turn back on him? Will you turn back on his sunnah? 
And then the Sahaba radiallahu everything changed. There was confusion. There was darkness. The Sahaba Anas radiallahu says, there was no day more dark than after the demise of Rasulullah sallallahu So much so, we would extend our hand to other people to say salam and we couldn't see their hand. It was as if there was a real darkness that they felt. They couldn't focus, they couldn't think. They couldn't focus, they couldn't think. Now the Messenger of Allah throughout his death, what was he saying? A salah, prayer. Your prayer. One of the last moments before he passed away, he, he could not speak, he pointed to his curtain. That opened, if you opened it, you'd see the Masjid the Nabawi, you'd see the people praying. And so when he, the, the, the curtain was opened, the Sahaba turned around and they saw him smiling in joy. Anas says that was the last and biggest smile of joy that we saw. Why was he smiling? Because he saw his community establishing salah. The, the, Abu Bakr was there, the Sahaba were praying behind him. He saw the community establishing salah. Establishing the prayer. Now when the Messenger of Allah passed away, there were many verses of poetry that the, the, the Sahaba they wrote and they said, Hassan ibn Thabit very beautifully he says, ما بال عينك لا تنامك أنما كحلت مآقيها بكحل بكحل الأرمدي that what is the state of my eyes what's happened to my eyes that it is as if there have been permanent marks left like eyeliner permanent marks left by the tears that are flowing because of the fear over the rightly guided person the best person to have ever stepped foot on the earth don't go far from us. Where are you going? Where are you going, O oh Rasulullah? And he said, If it were for me, I would use my face to protect the Messenger of Allah from the dirt of the ground. Only if I didn't see such a day, only if I didn't see such a day, and I was placed in Baqiyah, the, 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 the the maqbara of Baqiyah, the graveyard of Baqiyah before you were. And throughout this, my brothers and sisters, the entire time, what is the Messenger of Allah focusing on? He's focusing on one thing. Your dealings with Allah and your dealings with the people. Your salah between you and Allah and then your dealings with the people and those who are specifically beneath you. And I'll conclude with one last hadith. What did the Messenger of Allah say? He said, very famous hadith, right? We all know it. Oh, how I wish I could have seen my brothers. Oh, how I wish I could have seen my brothers. The Sahaba said, are we not your brothers? They said, no. He said, no, my brothers are those who did not see me, but they believed in me. But they wished that they could see me so bad that they would sacrifice their family and their wealth and everything to see me just once. Question is, the Messenger of Allah is not with us. How much would you be willing to sacrifice just to see him once? It's an actual question. Would you actually be willing to sacrifice your family and your wealth to see the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? To hold on to his sunnah, that he is not with us, but his sunnah is with us. And not to just say that the sunnah is just sunnah. Oh, it's not obligatory. Oh, the deen was made easy. Why should I make something difficult on myself? Oh, it's different times, brother, now. The times have changed. My brothers and sisters, the time for the sunnah never changes. The sunnah is universal till the day of Qiyamah. What will you do for that sunnah? The month of Rabi'ul Awal is coming. A lot of discussion regarding the Messenger of Allah His seerah, it's just like a stepping stool for you. It's a stepping stool for me. That we think about his life. We think about such a difficult story. Wallahi, I did not even tell a fraction of some of the ahadith that are there regarding his, his passing. The trials that he faced. Hmm? And then, how attached you are to him through his sunnah. The Messenger of Allah I conclude with this, what did he say to Mu'adh radhanhu? He said, O oh, Mu'adh, don't worry, don't cry. Don't cry that when you come back, you'll only see, you'll only see my grave in the masjid. 
Because inna awla nasi bi al muttaqun haythu kanu wa man kanu. That those who are the most worthy of my companionship, of seeing me, of being with me, are those who fear Allah. Wherever they are and whoever they are. So my brothers and sisters, what are we willing to do and sacrifice for the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu The Sahaba radiallahu showed us that they were willing to give everything. What are we willing to give? We ask Allah Ta'ala to give us understanding of this. The ability to love our Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam more than ourselves, our parents and our children. We ask Him that He give us the ability to give everything for His sunnah so that we can be obedient to Him. And that he raises amongst his companions on the day of resurrection. Qul qul hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa sa'il al-muslimin fa astaghfiruna wa ghafur rahim. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nastaghfiruhu wa na'minu bihi wa natawakkalu alayhi wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyi'ati a'malina may yahdillahu fala mudilla lahu wa may yudlil fala hadiya lahu wa nashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah wahdah la sharika lahu wa nashhadu anna sayyidina wa nabiyyana Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu ibadallah inna Allah qad amarakum bi amrin badaha fi bi nafsihi wa thanna bihi al-malaikata al-musabbihata bi qudsihi wa thalatha bikum ayyuhal mu'minuna haythu qal inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Allahumma salli ala muhammad wa ala ala muhammad bi adadi man salla wa saam Allahumma salli ala muhammad wa ala ala muhammad bi adadi man qada wa qam wa salli ala jami'al anbiya wa al-mursaneen wa ala al-malaikata al-mukarrabeen wa ala ibadillahi al-salihin wa rahmatika ya arhamu al-rahimin Allahumma azil islam al-muslimin Allahumma salli islam al-muslimin اللهم انصرهم في كل أرضك يا رب العالمين اللهم اللهم ارفع راية الإسلام والمسلمين يا أرحم الراحمين عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء القربى وإنهاء الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي لذلك لعلكم تذكرون ولذكر الله تعالى أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون كل الصلاة